This is an updated tutorial on light linking in Modo. I did a previous tutorial on light linking back in the 601 days, but a few things have changed since then, so it seems a good time for an update. Light linking is definitely much more convenient than it used to be. So just for a general overview, light linking in Modo works at the shader level. So for example, if I wanted to exclude uh, this tablecloth from the lights, I would just click on it in preview to select the material. And uh, let's just go and grab that material tablecloth here. And then uh, I would uh, assign a shader to that material. So let's do that now. Let's just quickly add a custom shader, go to special shader, and then drag it above the base shader. And from here, I can control the uh, light linking. Let me just expand this so you can see it. See, control light linking. But before I do that, I would need to create a group with the lights that I want to either include or exclude. So I'll just pop back to the item list and you can see that I've got a couple of extra lights in the scene. So let's just activate them both. I've got a sort of pink area light and a second sort of very bright spotlight. And now I'm going to hit spacebar to deselect everything before I create my new group. And then I'm going to select this spotlight, which I want to be included in the light group I'm about to create. So I'm going to go to the groups panel, new group, I'm going to call it spotlight from selected items. Just click OK. And there's one item in this group, which is this spotlight. So if I now switch back to my shader tree and select the shader and go back to the light linking, let's select the spotlight as the light link group and have exclude. Now this means that the spotlight now is not contributing any light to this tablecloth. If I change it to include, it's going to do the opposite. The tablecloth now is only receiving light from the spotlight and it's not receiving uh, any light from this spotlight or from this area light because they're not in the group. Now if I remove the grouping, you'll see what the include mode does. The uh, tablecloth is completely black because it's not receiving any light at all because uh, there are no lights included if you like. If I switch it back to the default of exclude, it will now get the contribution from all three lights in the scene. So this is pretty much how things were working in 601, but one nice thing that was introduced in 701 was the ability to add shaders directly to items. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure I've got nothing selected by hitting spacebar. I'm going to select my area light and I'm going to create a new group uh, for that. So let's call it area light from selected items. So that's cre created a second light group, which is going to encompass my area light. And let's say that I don't want this pink light shining on the floor. Well, what I do is I select the plane item and I'm going to right click on it in the item list and create item shader. And now if I expand the little plus sign, I can access the shader. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to untick compute shading, untick control quality, untick control visibility and fog. And all I'm leaving now is control light linking. And if I leave it in exclude mode and select my area light uh, from the list, you'll see that the pink light now disappears from the floor. So that's a great way of controlling light linking on the item level. But what about if you want to control light linking on a whole bunch of items? It's not really practical to have to add item shaders to loads of different items in your item list. Well, that's where you can turn to the groups panel once again. So to demonstrate this, I'm just going to go back to the item list and I'm going to hit spacebar to deselect everything. And in the item list, I'm just going to select a whole bunch of things that I want to include in my light linking. So let's go down to the bottom here. And now I'm going to go back to the groups panel. I'm going to create a new group from selected items and I'm going to call this table stuff. So inside this group, there is now 31 items, the, all the things that I had selected in the uh, item list. And if I now go to the shader tree, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable this shader with a tablecloth because my tablecloth is also in my latest group, so I don't want any confusion there. I go to the top of the uh, shader tree and I'm going to add a new group and drag it above the base shader. It's absolutely crucial you do this because otherwise the base shader will override the shader that you put inside this group and you don't want that. Inside this group, I'm going to add a shader. I'm going to item mask this group on the groups panel group table stuff that I created with my 31 items. 
And now I'm going to go to this shader, and just like before, I'm going to untick Compute Shading, Control Quality, Control Visibility, and Control Fog. So now only light linking is being uh, controlled by this shader. So if I select my area light, you'll see that straight away it's excluded. And if I change the mode to include, now only the area light is illuminating the stuff on the table. So you can see this is a really handy way of uh, controlling light linking with a whole bunch of items. You just um, create a group panel group with all your items. And then in the shader tree, you create a new folder, if you like, that you uh, item mask onto this group. And then you put a shader inside there that only controls light linking. That means that the shading, the quality, and the visibility will be controlled by the other shaders in the scene. In this case, it's the base shader, but it could also be custom shaders that you assign to uh, your items or to your shaders. And just as a little bit of extra information, it's also worth remembering that this technique of creating a group in the groups panel can be used for all sorts of other applications that uh, shaders can be used for. For example, it's not just light linking that you uh, can control with this method. If you decided that you wanted to control visibility uh, using this group, uh, this item mask onto the groups panel group, for instance, you didn't want any of this stuff to cast shadows. Well, there you go. You can control it this way. You can make it all invisible to camera, for instance, uh, invisible to uh, reflections or GI, etc. And you can also control shading quality this way if that's another thing that you want to do. If you want to assign a finer shading rate to a whole bunch of items or you just tick control quality, set your shading rates, etc. So it's just a very useful method all round for doing various shader based operations in Modo. So thanks for watching this tutorial. If you found this uh, video useful, please consider buying some of my commercial tutorials. I have a Vimeo channel with some relatively inexpensive uh, videos on. That's at vimeo.com forward slash Richard Yacht. I also have some uh, tutorials directly for sale through the Foundry website. Uh, I have a series on rendering in Modo. So once again, thank you very much.